G'day viewers, Ivan here from Peak Off-Road Equipment, Wetherill Park, Sydney, Australia, and welcome again to the showroom. And we have a couple of great tents here from the Bush Company. Bush Company is a South African company. We've been doing their tents now for come seven years, and we've had the opportunity and also the pleasure to see how they've evolved over the years. And we do these videos as the new products come out and in this case here, we have the AX27. Now to my left, would you believe it is the old AX27? And to my right is the brand new AX27 that just turned up. And uh, as always here, we always have the most current um, uh, tent on the market. And this shows the new differences between the old AX and the new AX. The reason we changed it over the actual tent off the display is because there's been too many variances since the initial AX27s come out. They came out initially with a smaller base and that wasn't really working out and they went and done the extrusion again and came to this base. Now with this base is the base of the tent, the bucket of the tent, because the tent, all these rooftop tent is a bucket with a lid. Um, Throughout their old range, now they have the AX27, which is behind me. The DX27, the only difference is how much it opens. So the AX and the DX, and now the TX are all the same bases, right? Between the difference between AX and DX is just how much it opens. So instead of opening up that much, it opens up less. Gets rid of this best and worst feature and they've solved this problem now. Um, so that's the difference between the AX and the DX, right? Now the difference between these two tents. So what we've got here, the old one, and the one that just turned up just the other day. And uh, we are shooting this in February 2023. So in my old videos, you would have seen the best feature and the worst feature is this huge awning. If it's like sunny as it is today, and it's beautiful and no wind, no problem. Um, you also get some tie downs to hold it down in the wind, uh, but there was no really other option apart from unclipping it and pulling it off the sail track, which I won't show you. But what we've got here now with the new, new AX, I'm just gonna push this down and I'm gonna use the new spring pole, which is fantastic. They've got these two little tie points up here, right? So now you can stand up in here, take the spring poles out and roll it up. I'll take this spring pole out of here as well. Notice the difference. I'll just come close to the camera. That's it, maybe it won't work but you can see the hook. Now, when you're, um, now when you're um, uh, say I've got a 200 series or whatever, you can just put this on here. I'm gonna need my short look at, wait a second. Right. Now, when you've got a 79 series, the way to do it is you hook it in. You hook it in. And I'll make the tent now. The tent is two meters in the air. You bring it in and just drop it in. The difference is this hook is huge. The other difference is now you can roll up that awning. Anyway, today uh, we've got Dave. He's shooting his uh, second video for us. Say hello, Dave. And Dave's here and uh, hopefully everything will turn out fantastic. Uh, he's away and uh, Dave stepped in first. All right, let's go have a look inside this tent. Um, no, we'll have a look inside this tent first, the old one, and I'll show you the differences between, let's get you re-tuned to the old one and then get back into the new one. All right, let's have a quick look. Wow, this tent's been on display for ages and ages now. I think it's probably a year, a year and a bit. So it's had a few people come through it. Um, what you see here, the main major difference is with the old tent. So previously, like I said, they had a thinner base. Now it's got this big base. It had the light up the top, right, which used to be hooked on hard, a nice LED light. 
Then they went to this Velcro light, which is uh, chargeable, and you had your his and hers charging points. So Dave, you can... Now I find these to be pretty cool, to be up at that level, um, but uh, Bush Company have changed it because like all the mattresses, if we all were in a bed shop and um, I jumped on a mattress, Dave jumped on a mattress, Artie jumped on a mattress, none of us would pick the same mattress. Everyone was saying this is annoying because uh, when they're charging their phones, they're sleeping on the thing. And now they've changed it over to the bottom down here for the USBs both sides. So that's the big difference is you still get the pockets and you still get the double, double canvas. Uh, but now the fly screens no longer come from the side across. They come from the top. So we're going to have a look at that as well right now. Um, you can still run your wire up through here on the old one, as you saw up there. But anyway, that is it. That's the old tent. So they were just up there. This is there. Still got lots of pockets. Plenty of room for me to fit inside. Let's go have a look at the new one. Alrighty. Okay. So this is the new one. It's a little bit more cleaner and much nicer to look at. Like I was saying them before, they still have the canvas, this one. Also the one at the top, which is your double, but now this rolls up this way, which I find it a little bit better. Um, it's again, it's what, you know, neither here nor there. The actual USBs are down here, and this one is plugged into here, and you can unplug this. Now, hopefully it's got charge, and you put it up there. So it's pretty, pretty straightforward. I might as well hold it. No, it doesn't do bugger all. Um, internally wise, uh, I think there's an extra couple of uh, can holders same pockets up the top. Also, mattress is pretty much the same as before. What I'll do is, well, Dave, we'll just go back a bit, right? Just go back a bit. And uh, this is another difference here, what we have here. So on the old one, you used to only have the one in the center. And I'll just grab the ladder, just hang on there for a second, Dave. So the new ladder comes up with the double bunger holes, right? Where the old one used to be just the one, okay? So the theory was with the one is if you're on unlevel ground, it would move nicely and it will stay locked in. But it also gave it a little bit of a, oh my God, I'm going to die going up this ladder. So they've gone for the double, double, double hitch method and this is the ladder you get with it. So that's pretty straightforward as well. What we also have to talk about now, so I'll put that away. What we'll do is we'll go, Dave, we'll go have a look at the mountings and get that out of the way. Alrighty, between all the tents, we're down here. They've still got the rails where you can put the bolts in this way. So this is a standard sort of um, rhino with a uni strut bar, as you can see there. And this is an alley cab bar, but it's a very similar bar to most other things. And if you quickly just pan over here, if you can see that one, this is the, sta this is the mountings you get with the, um, uh, with the tent. So you get a bunch of those big, ass, big, <laughs> big bolts and you can mount it. Now also Bush Company, um, if you don't want to use that other clamping method, they do have these brackets on the Bush Company website. They're just a little bit thinner here. They work really well with these, but not so great with those. We've made our own brackets. Pretty straightforward, right? It's only an L bracket. But what it does is it spreads the load. So I'll just pull this one out. Remember, these you can adjust anywhere you want. So it's a brief mounting of the Bush Company tent. And remember, this bracket can go left and right, left and right, and then in and out. And all it is, is a channel nut and an L bracket. Now, these are on the Bush Company website, or you can come pick some of these up off me. They're not that expensive. The other way you can mount this as well is if you use like uh, the Bush Company bar with the, uh, the, the channel here, you can run these into the channel, which is really a preferred method because the tents are a little bit inconsistent let me just put this in. I really need my short lookers, but I can't see them. Right, and then you can turn this one out 
and just run that bolt here with it without this. So you just turn this around. I'm going to do this once. You can see, oh, I prepared it here earlier anyway. So we put this one back in here if it goes in. Now this is your load bar, it sits on here and you can just mount that like that. Right, that kind of makes sense to you. It will when you get the brackets on. You have three load bars, say if you put in on a 200 series, three load bars, you either mount, the, mount these brackets this way or this way, depending on what bars you have, or you use the clamping method. All right, now we'll go to the other things that we'll talk about is, again, mounting wise, is the awning brackets. Now, this is the way you mount the awning brackets normally, and I've got my other one. Don't worry about this at the moment. So this is what you get when you buy an awning, and this is in the up version, and this is in the down version. So now your awning can be lower than the tent, or it can be mounted higher than the tent. Say if you've got a, a um, canopy door that you want to have access to open it, because remember, the awnings are all parallel with the ground. So if the base was here, the awning would come out parallel. So if your door's going up like a Lamborghini Contage door, you need to mount it up, right? If it's mounted like a square door, it'll come straight out and you can mount it nice and low. So this really helps a lot. Now the only problem if you mount it, I'll just put this away. The only problem if you mount it high Right, and Bush Company have their own brackets. We put, made these brackets years ago, right? If you mount it high, the awning remote set is parallel with the ground. It comes around, and just watch my hand. Oh my God, you have to put a dog leg in this. Well, that's not the way around it. Here's the way around it. We have some videos on this anyway. Basically, now you just gotta chop a little bit off the spring pole. Bush Company have their own bracket. It's not like this one, this one can be set at different heights. The other one is set at one height and then you just cut, very simply just cut the awning, uh, the awning pole off or the spring pole off and that will give you a nice level top. So remember, that's how you mount, it's super easy. It's probably the most simplest thing in the world. How to actually physically mount this awning onto this tent. So this happens with both the new tent and the old tent. No longer do you have to bend these bars and we haven't bent these bars for a long time. So just remember that. Again, going back to, remember what I said, no longer were you um, uh, the biggest and worst factor was this awning. Now that has been a huge complaint and it was what had to happen, right? Because as the tent goes up further and further, the awning gets further and further away. You see like other tents use hard poles and, they may, and then it's uh, tight as a drum, which is fantastic as well. But then you have four poles to deal with. So the best solution here is to have those roll up ones. That will only take a second. You stand on the inside, take the spring poles off, start rolling it up, bunch it all up and go from there. All right, now there's gonna be one more thing I'm gonna show you uh, on this video, is how to close a tent. And I'm gonna make a short as well on this, which will be our first short. So David's pretty excited about doing that. Me, eh, all this technology. All right, let's go have a look how we're gonna go do this, and I'll show you how to bring this tent down, because that one's against the wall. Right, big scary time, we're closing the awning. People get this wrong, even in the videos, which uh, Bush Company do themselves, they quickly scratch it in, and I have to show people a hundred times. Basically, you take your spring poles out. Now, this end, you throw in here. Try not to hit the child that is actually inside there when you close the tent, because that's, you know, that's cruelty, it's very bad. All right, see, so it's all a mess. What you have is a seam. A seam and a seam, right? Once you've got the two seams across, put them together, bungee cord, nice and high. Pretty straightforward. Then, you remember, you're on a ladder two metres up in the air. 
You make like a tuxedo. Look at that, tuxedo. Now what's going to happen is, as you're going, this is all going to go nicely in there and not be all clumped up in here. The way to do this is not this way, but this way with the flat side. Can you see, Dave? We bring it down and look at the bungee cord. Look what it's doing. I'm pushing this up as I'm going down. I'm going to flick this open to grab again and pull the tuxedo. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Now this is all nicely tucked away, super easy. Look down there, bringing it down, bringing it down. Then you close it. Just let the air out. The more pillows you have, the more, you, more it's, uh, it's more and more difficult. All right, one last thing before I finish up, and I'm going to quickly show you the solar panel that are coming out now. Hang on, don't move, Dave. Look what I have. Now that is a solar panel. Apparently, um, I'm going to go, because I can't remember all the things. Uh, if I get enough requests, we will stock these. We're not an auto electrician. It's 400 watts, I think, or plus, don't quote me. Dave will put it right now. He's going to take a picture and he's going to drop it in there and he's going to put it on pause. Also, if there's enough requests on these panels, we'll make a small extrusion that goes over this, which bolts into here. And then you can hide the wires nicely here and just imagine a, a cover plate across here, right? If there's enough call for it. If there's not enough call for it, I'm not going to. I'm not going to bother. The other. The other. The other way of doing it is if you. Um, I just bring this down. This is ra This is getting rather long. Right. This is getting rather long. The other way of doing it is the old-fashioned way. This gets very expensive. You have a look up here. You put the load bars on. One, two, three. Put your uh, hard shell panel on that. He's going to give you a quick look at that. Right here, I'm just going to finish up now. Well, before I finish up, I better open this up. I'll try to uh, keep this video as short as I as I can um, as I can keep it. Unfortunately, uh, there is a lot to do and show. Sorry, I'm showing in my back, which is not normal for me. All right, guys. That was a lot. Look, I am sweating. It's, it's warm here today. Um, there's a lot to show you, um, especially the mountings and the new way of mounting things up. Also, the, the USBs down the bottom and those new tie points. Everything that's about 10 is the same size, length, weight. All that is good. Uh, the solar panel options, as you saw, were pretty straightforward. Guys, thank you for listening to me dribble. I uh, hope you found it informative and interesting. Going to see you out there on the tracks. I'm going to go grab a beer. Have a good one. Hooray, guys. Cheers. I need a fan. Oh, it's hot.